Welcome back to the Troubleshooting Like Podcast. I'm your host, Craig Poston, with my co-host, Jay Peters, where we talk about various topics, sharing our experiences on life and finance. Uh, now, for entrepreneurial pursuits, how do you transition from an idea from action, or to action, my apologies, from an idea to action for like what you're doing entrepreneurial-wise and also trying to manage your other responsibilities of your like your family and your kids and work and stuff like that i won't say that i've I've kind of mastered that i haven't Uh, i would say that what i'm doing is trying to figure out what tools i need to Mm -hmm. make me more productive so if i you know i need to do something at my w2 job that's professional so i need to keep studying and reading with that i i need to make time for that and then also for anything that's dealing with business i actually just uh, sit down and think about what would you want to change? What do, you, what do you need? You know, what other things you can use to make yourself better with that? So that's kind of like what I've been doing lately with that. And then the same, in, okay, so say with my family, my kids, I'm, you know, trying to do the best I can with making sure that they utilize school the best way they can mm. to take, I, which they, they won't see this, right? And I'm going to probably have to keep saying it. And it's not a probably, I will have to keep yeah. saying it, letting them know that opportunities are in front of you every day. You need to take advantage. Yeah. Opportunities are in front of you every day. You need to take I'm going to have to keep saying that to them throughout the rest of their life or at least until they reach a certain yeah. point of their age yeah. you know, where I'm going to just say, hey, you're on your own. You're going to have to figure it out. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So, uh, and that's the uh, same thing like with my, my daughter. She's in the STEM program and I'm making sure that she understands that you're in something that other people aren't. So you need to take advantage of it. I definitely didn't do it when I was younger. Yeah. So, I, I want you to really take advantage of this. You know, the piano lessons I, I send you to, make sure you take advantage of this. You never know what you'll use it for, right? Yeah. You know, it, and right now she's uh, learning the viola, something I oh, didn't yeah. even know was a was an instrument, but it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Adri loves the viola. That's what she used to play in, in high school and stuff. Yeah, So, but it, it, it's, it's kind of cool uh, that my daughter is into this, and which I'm still telling her hard work is still involved, regardless if you just like it or not. You yeah. still got to work. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, putting her in, in multiple different things, it gives her options. Yeah. Right. Where if you kind of just stay in like, I'm just going to do school work and, you know, play sports, which, which is great. You know, sports also offers that, but it, it, it shows you that there's multiple things, right? Yeah. I don't have to be content with just doing school work than just going to play sports. I can play an instrument. I can yeah. do all these things where and it, it, it provides, you know, different value. Right. Where like, you know, playing an instrument or doing artistic things really, you know, bring out that creativity in people. Playing sports can do like the competitiveness. It can bring out the uh, the camaraderie, the teamwork type stuff. Right. Yeah. Schoolwork, it, it shows you processes in order to get to a certain outcome. Right. So I think and especially like the, the biggest thing that a lot of people don't teach or is kind of hard to teach is a, what's called critical thinking. Right. Where it's not like simple input and output yeah. where like everyone knows that two plus two equals four. Mm-hmm. Right. But what is in critical thinking is where you have multiple inputs and multiple outcomes. Right. Where it's not just that simple binary that two plus two is always an equal four. Yeah. Right. It's like what happens in the real world because that's what a lot of the real world is, is critical thinking. Like, well, I have this situation and all this information. How do I get it to this, this outcome? Um, or what is the upcoming outcome? But yeah. No, I think that's good. I think it, I think it's hard. I think if when you're trying to do the like managing time and yeah. stuff, it, you slowly realize how much time you not necessarily you don't have. No, no, it's you don't have. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 you don't have for yourself, I guess. Like, yeah, uh, because it, you know, everyone has the same twenty four hours. Yeah, right. Um, how you have to kind of divide that and use your twenty four hours is kind of up to you. But I think that kind of helps a lot too, is because you can dictate how those. Yeah. 24 hours go right so like if you already have a job where you have to work eight nine hours right you have to commute you have to you know take care of the kids you have to sleep right what happens within those like small amount of hours that you have like maybe it's like three yeah. hours left and it's not maybe not the most productive hours right no, like no. so it's it, it's it's a it's a battle it's yeah. definitely a battle for uh for managing time and stuff yeah no i just jump in there like, like you said it, when it's just those uh moments three hours that's left when I'm commuting to work, I'm actually listening to a podcast. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm, I'm listening to something that's um, kind of like helping me out with my my day to day activities. It might truly motivate me. Yes, music motivates me, but at the end of the day, sometimes the the lyrics that you hear don't make sense. Yeah. All right. So like it's real, like content for learning. Yeah. No. It it might be lyrics to help you stay motivated, but not not like hey, what did what did I put in that mental bank for today that's yeah. going to help me later on? And so commuting definitely listen to podcasts uh, between that that. Pretty much that's like an hour if you think about it. Yeah. About, yeah, 30 minutes either way, right? Yeah. And then when I get home, you know, after all my family tasks or whatever I have to do, right, running around, then that's why I try to make a to-do list. Like, okay, I need to hit hit something. So if I'm reading, I need to go ahead and at least read 30 minutes. Okay, I'm from a lab. I, I need to lab for, you know, 30 minutes to an hour, right? Whatever it is, I need because I need to put new content in my brain yeah. so I can you know make myself better pretty sure. much, all right? So yeah, that that's usually how it is. So yeah, my weeks are really not they're really busy, and I think that's why on the weekend I try to sleep in, but it, it don't always work. But yeah. I'm up still doing stuff. So no, yeah, no, definitely. Now going into like uh, the IT field and stuff, uh, has how has your experience in IT influenced your understanding of execution and effort balance in your personal or professional life? And that would be. The the kind of like what I said, the making sure I'm spending a little bit of time doing something to get ahead. Uh, right now, I'm gonna do another certification, which is gonna force me to to learn more. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it is on something that I already have experience in, but I'm I have to again not just have the effort because was the effort for me was I set the exam date. That's the effort, right? Yeah. Now the the execution would be me now setting aside time to read the book yeah. right and then also to do the hands-on portion of it mm. right uh i've been coming up with ideas where okay maybe i should take off three days in a row to make sure hey or a week right uh, in a row to make sure i am getting uh everything i need from this book mm. now yes i can do it piece by piece but i feel like sometimes i just need to force feed myself yeah so there there's me trying to make the execution happen so that's me making a real plan once I actually put that plan in place, there there's the true execution, mm-hmm. right? So like it's, you you know, you go from okay, here's the thought to here's me setting the exam, saying hey, I'm putting in some work. Here's the effort towards it, because uh, you know, you can put the effort, but you don't mean you're gonna pass, right? Right. So then after that, it's gonna be the study time, and to have true study time, not just like I'm reading and I'm like a zombie reading. Yeah. I need I need to like be all there. Yeah. Right? Very intentional. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Same thing, right? Well, as I said, you use that energy you have from a workout, um, that, that same thought pattern, that excitement, you know, that uh, adrenaline, yeah, and try to focus that energy towards what I'm trying to learn or whatever. And that, that and, it, and it does help, uh, uh, especially if you, you got a brain that likes to wonder. Like, yeah, I have thoughts, right. yeah, yeah. So, like, you have to like push yourself in, 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 in that spot, like, here I am, yeah, right. No, definitely. I will say, like, uh, being in the IT field and being in, like, a few different positions, I've learned to n- notice, like, whose value are we providing? Yeah. Right? Like, is it the customers? Is it, like, your program manager? Is it your boss? Like, for your specific role, like, who am, who is this value going towards? Like, w- for what I am doing, who is getting the most value? For example, like, if I was a, if, for example, as I'm a lead, right, my priority is the customer and our our project management offices right but the people that work under me their priority is making sure that their features get done mm-hmm. so that i can provide that to the customer right okay so and, it, and it's just like different perspective right so but for me like that's what kind of really uh honed in like the execution versus effort thing is like yes we're doing a lot of things right i could troubleshoot for x amount of hours i could help this person for however long but does it actually amount to something at the end right does like these you know 40 hours in this week really mean that i am putting out 40 hours for that person or for that customer so, so i mean that really that that that's all on you right so if you want value you know given to the customer you also got to put value into yourself right. so how, how can you bring value to someone else if you're not doing uh doing it for yourself as well and it's it's kind of kind of funny it's like you need to be selfish but you need to you know be a selfless person right Right. so i was like okay i'm doing this for the team but to bring value to the team i need to be a little selfish and put knowledge into me like so that 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 all that work at the end of the day it should it should be for all of you right 
and it shouldn't be just for one set of people. And like, just like how, okay, you do put in all this work for your boss. Right. Yeah. And people feel like they've done nothing. No, you need to make what you're doing for yourself as well. And I kind of get this, this idea also from the military because they always say, Hey, the, the, uh, the army is going to get theirs. So you might as well get yours. Right. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, right. You don't use it as in a, a, a truly selfish thing, but you do it as in to make yourself proficient at your job. Yeah. You make sure that you're educated in a way that if you did not want to be in that green suit, if you didn't want to be a service member anymore, once you finish your contract, how would you bring value elsewhere? Who are you bringing value to your family? Like how would you make yourself at that point, a better person for everybody and yourself? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, you, you need to be selfish to be selfless. Right. Yeah, no, and I definitely agree. So when I was going through either my bachelor's or my master's and we yeah. were going through like a morality and ethics type of class, there was a, a thought of ethics uh, or a thought of morality where you have to be so selfish enough that you can take care of others. Yeah. Right, to where, and, and, it, and I definitely subscribe to that thought as in I've done enough to where I'm not dependent on everyone, but people can depend on me. Yeah. Right. To where if they need that assistance, whether that's financial, if they need knowledge, if they need, you know, help at work, whatever it is, that I'm going to be in that space or in that place to be able to help them. Yeah. And it was because I was selfish enough to focus on studying, focus on getting the certification, focus on, you know, learning what the customer wants, whatever that value is. But it, it didn't stem from, and it's not like that selfishness stemmed from, I just want to learn everything. I just want to be by myself. It stemmed from like, I want to be of service to people yeah. and I want to help people. And I can't do that when I'm not in a good space. Like it's exactly, it, yeah. it's hard to give someone money when you don't have money. Yeah. No. Right. It's hard to give someone time or attention when you don't have any because you have to work so much. Yeah. Right. So I think it being selfish to the point where you can give is, is in my opinion, what I've always wanted or done. Hey y'all, if you didn't know, mine and Craig's mission is to bridge the gap between generations by empowering, exposing, and educating others about financial literacy, new perspectives, and life goals. We can't do that without reaching more ear holes. So if you enjoy this content, then please share this to at least one other person to help us expand our brand and their minds.